So welcome back to another episode of Lockdown Upgrades, where today we are upgrading the Unify USG3 that's been running my home broadband for the past few years. And today we're replacing it with this, the Unify UDM Pro, which at the time of making this review is sold out everywhere and is still listed as a pre-order on many UK websites. So what exactly is the UDM Pro? Well, it stands for the Unify Dream Machine Pro. Is it anything to do with the Dream Machine? Well, yes, but it's kind of completely different as well. With the UDM Pro, you get an enterprise class router. And when I say enterprise class, I mean a router that's capable of handling gigabit broadband speeds. Even with security features such as the intrusion detection and the intrusion protection system switched on, um, since my USG3 isn't as powerful, if I enable those two features on my existing router, it caps my speeds to less than 80 meg. And when I have a broadband connection of over 300 meg here at home, I quite like to use all of that. So you also get a built-in eight port gigabit switch, which isn't PoE, unfortunately, as it would make a few things a lot easier, which we'll get into in a bit. And lastly, you also get something which the Dream Machine did not have on it, which is Unify Protect, which is basically Ubiquiti's latest offering for CCTV. And last time I looked at Unify Protect, it was when installing the system on a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus at our offices and when we moved in. And, and to be honest, I've been pretty impressed ever since. The features have steadily been getting better and addressing any major complaints that I've had. And, and overall, it's, it's just reliable, it's easy to use and well, it just works. With that said, a couple of things that the UDM Pro does not include are firstly, a hard drive for Protect. So you'll need to grab a drive and install that in this slot right here. Drive, slot. Easy as that. Secondly, it doesn't include any built-in wireless like the Dream Machine did have. However, this is generally geared towards bigger businesses, so I can let that one go, as, as typically this will get installed in a server room, way out of the way of anything where built-in wireless would actually be of any use. So instead, you'll need to deploy your own separate wireless network. But since the USG3 didn't have built-in wireless either, I've already built out my own home wireless network because I also live in a house where the walls seem to be made of solid wireless sucking vampires, to the point where you can literally have an access point on one side of the wall and it not get signal on the other side. Anyway, enough of me talking. Obviously I've popped the four terabyte disk drive in the slot for Protect and I'm gonna go and swap it over for my USG3. And then hopefully we can just restore the config which I've backed up from the USG3 over to the UDM Pro and be back up and running pretty quickly. I'm also gonna be migrating my CCTV system over to this because at the moment I use Security Spy which is running on my Mac mini and that currently runs all my home automation software. And, and it's great and it integrates really well, but as a pure CCTV product for, for ease of use, I actually prefer the Protect software more. So we're gonna run with that for a while and um, just see how we get on with it. New clothes means it's a day later. And have you ever started something where it's turned into a massive, massive ball ache? You know, the ones where your wife hates you because it's taking so long. Hello darkness, my old friend. So yesterday I went to put the new router in the rack only to discover that the rack wasn't deep enough. So I moved the rails forward, made a bit more space and it still doesn't really fit properly, which is ridiculous really because in the teardown videos I've seen of the UDM Pro, there's just hardly anything inside it. So eventually I got the thing racked, just about, booted it up and it, it still wouldn't let me just restore the config from my old one. It forced me th to go through the startup wizard. And step one of the startup wizard is to get an internet connection. 
So I plug it in, enter the username and password for the broadband connection and uh, nothing. Didn't work. Rebooted it. Didn't work. Pulled the hard disk, reset it to factory defaults. Still nothing. What I actually had to do was manually upgrade the firmware via a command line, something which isn't even documented online. I had to piece it together from number of forum posts and others going through the exact same problem that I was. Finally, once that was done, it, it actually passed the setup steps and gave me the options to restore the config. Well, hey. Firstly, the config wouldn't restore because my backup was a newer version than the one installed on the UDM Pro. So I had to find an older backup, which did work. Well, I say it worked. It finished and then I rebooted the device and it kind of worked. I could log into the controller sometimes, but none of the devices worked. I tried rebooting it again and then it took itself into recovery mode for, for no reason. Or at least it said so on the screen on the front of the device because it still took me back into the normal interface when I tried to connect to it. Basically, this thing seems to be a pile of <laughs> What I've done now is I've wiped the whole thing, started from fresh, adopted all of the wireless access points and the switches from around the house, and basically reconfigured it all, uh, which means I've lost all of my settings, all of the names, all of the customizations and configurations that I've set up previously. The protect system was equally faulty and, and this is something that I've ranted and raved about for a while. So I installed the protect feature and every time I went to the settings page, it errored. I then had to uninstall it and reinstall protect and then it worked. So it's basically an awful lot of faff for what should have been a simple case of switch it on, restore a backup and away we go. Now it's up and running. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's powerful enough to have all of the security features on without slowing it down. The protect system, as I've mentioned before, is good. And now it is set up, it will likely revert back to one of those devices you only really touch a few times a year just to do an upgrade on it or, you know, when you want to change some settings. Oh. COVID life. So would I recommend this for either business or home use? And I can't really argue that it's a convenient package. The CCTV and gigabit capable speeds, even with all the security features enabled, but it shouldn't have to be that difficult to get it working. Crawling the internet, I saw hundreds of posts and complaints about similar issues. I just hoped that they would have been fixed by now. And you would have assumed that any devices sold would have had that fixed firmware preloaded. So if you're prepared to mess around for a bit to get this working, then yeah, this could be a good option for you. It's affordable. Currently in the UK, it's actually cheaper to buy it from the Ubiquiti a European store directly than from any other UK supplier and they also have stock. But it raises the question once more, something all too familiar when looking at the Ubiquiti product range and particularly for their line of routers of how unreliable their firmware releases are, which in my experience has caused frequent issues with setup across basic things like getting an internet connection through to site to site VPN tunnels. And well, once it's all working, it it works. So I'll let you make up your own mind here. And perhaps if you are setting this up, pick a day that gives you plenty of time to uh, to faff with silly firmware issues or risk upsetting the wife or the kids or the boss. Anyway, and as always, thanks for watching. Like the video if you did, subscribe if you're not already, hit the bell icon to be notified of our future videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, bye-bye. I'm just joking.